You don't have encampments <laughs> sitting on the ocean. No, you've done a great job. We just flew over on the plane. They did a big thing. And I was talking to all the people, thousands and thousands of people. I'm speaking from my plane. I said, this is different. But it looked beautiful. You've done a fantastic job as mayor. Thank you very much, Tony. But Tony is showing how we can fight for voter integrity and cleaning up the homelessness and all of the other things that you have to do to make a place work. I mean, you have to do it. And I'm honored today. As you know, I was uh, really honored to get his endorsement, because his endorsement was very meaningful to me. Thank you very much for that endorsement, Tony. We won't let you down. And I'm also honored to have the endorsement of former Lake Forest mayor, somebody very, very respected, Scott Voigt. Where's Scott? Scott, thank you very much. Great honor, Scott. Thank you. Did a great job. For generations, California was known as the embodiment of the America West, American culture, and America's future, and our great American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore, do you? You used to hear the American dream. The American dream, there's no American dream with Biden, most corrupt president in our history. The Golden State gave us the gold rush, the Golden Gate Bridge, and the golden age of Hollywood. What glamour, what beautiful glamour. If they ever came back from the dead, they'd look and say, what the hell happened to our state? <laughs> Can you imagine? That was a glamorous time. Now they would look and they would say, this can't be happening. It built Liberty Ships, the Sunset Strip, Disneyland, and the Internet and the iPhone. So many things came out of California. It was California that first elected public office Republican presidents. How about that? Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. Both. Both. But while California was once a symbol of American success today under the radical left fascists and Marxists that run your state, that's who's running your state. Bad people. It's becoming a symbol of our nation's decline. Gavin Newsom and the far-left communists in Sacramento. He did a great job as mayor of San Francisco, didn't he? But the far-left communists in Sacramento, San Francisco, and L.A., cities which are absolutely being destroyed rapidly on a daily basis, have given you sanctuary cities, wide-open borders, mass homeless encampments, out-of-control taxes, soaring income inequality like nobody's ever seen before, Marxist district attorneys, woke tech tyrants, they are woke, rolling blackouts, child sexual mutilation, and roving bands of looters, criminals, and thugs. But other than that, I think they're doing quite a good job. <laughs> Those things are all true. What a mess. How the hell do people vote for these people? You, the courageous patriots of California, Republican Party, are now the last line of defense standing between this state and total anarchy. And I am here to tell you that help is on its way. Help is on its way. Can't go on like this. Can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. We won't have a country left. The mission to help you liberate California from communist rule begins at noon on Inauguration Day 2025. 2025. We got to make I'll tell you, the election of 24 is the single most important election in the history of our country. I used to say it about 16. It's the most important, and it was. But this is more important because we're going to lose our country. Our country is going to hell. Our country is being destroyed. Together, we will take on the ultra-left-wing liars, losers, creeps, perverts, and freaks who are devouring the future of this state like a swarm of locusts. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi, who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house, which obviously didn't do a very good job. But then you have Kamala Harris. She's great. Gavin Newsom, who's a really 
I mean, I watched him the other night with Sean Hannity trying to say that California is wonderful. It's not wonderful. We all know it. It was wonderful. It could be wonderful again, but right now it's really a mess. Maxine Waters, very nice woman, very, very nice. How come she can say things so violently? You will go in and attack them in a restaurant. You'll do this, that. Nothing happens. If I say peacefully and patriotically, oh, there's an insurrection going on here. Maxine Waters, if I ever spoke like her, it would be the electric chair times 15 for me. The man who fell in love with a Chinese spy that they wouldn't take off their top committee, most important committee, Eric Swalwell. What a loser. And then you have, of course, my favorite, Shifty Adam Schiff, Pencil Neck. He's known for one thing, the world's smallest neck. You ever see? I call him Pencil Neck. If you touched him, his neck would break. And we will defeat their corrupt California political machine. No, Shifty Schiff is really, I mean, he is a sick person, that guy. Looks like he won't be your next senator anymore because he'll have somebody else put in and then he won't be able to run. Purgatory! Ah, oh, that's too bad. I don't know that he would have won anyway, but now he probably won't be able to run and he won't run against certain people because he wants to be politically correct, except when it comes to doing numbers on Republicans and keeping it going and hurting our country. But uh, it would look to me like he won't be there, but he's a disaster, that guy. They're all disaster. Crazy Nancy is a total disaster. She's nuts. Remember her with the beauty parlor, walking through the beauty parlor? Nobody else is to have their hair done. Then you have her. I, I don't know what happened to the owner of the beauty You know, she's a big MAGA person. How about that? Think Nancy? Think Nancy was thrilled when she learned that the owner of that beauty parlor, where they taped her walking through with the hair and the whole thing, everyone else is like home, using suds on the hair like I do. But I'm the only candidate who will do what it takes to get this job done. And remember, we have to get rid of mail-in ballots. We have to do it. And I was going to tell you, though, before we got off on a tangent, that we talked about Jimmy in a different way, but Jimmy actually had a commission which was very important at the time. And his one basic finding, his most important, was don't use mail-in ballots. They can't work. They will be corrupt. You'll have corrupted elections and lots of other things. But basically, it was a mail-in ballot uh, statement after many months of him and some of the other senior Democrats, they literally came to a conclusion, you can't use mail-in ballots. So what do we do? We're always trying to expand them. You know, in France, they use mail-in ballots, and they found they were so corrupt that they gave them up, and they recently had an election, 36 million people, 36 million voted. By 10 o'clock in the evening, you had a winner, you had a loser, and it was over. And nobody complained. They went to all paper with little uh, ID. You ever see what it is to get into the Democrat convention? They had the Democrat national. I call it the Democrat. You know, they like to call it the Democratic, because it sounds better. I hate, you know, for a speech, it sounds lousy to say Democrat. But that's what it is. It's called the Democrat National Committee. I don't know why they don't change the name, but they always say, don't ever say that, because it doesn't read well. But I say Democrat, because it does sound bad, frankly. But do you, did you ever see what you have to wear to get into their National Convention prior to the presidential election for the primaries and all, you have to wear a thing, the largest sign I've ever seen. It looks like you're uh, trying to sell groceries in a shop that's two blocks. It's like here. It's got your picture. It's got your fingerprints. It's got everything. They probably put Social Security numbers on. They put everything on. But for voting, you can't have anything. There's only one reason they don't want voter ID, because they want to cheat. That's the only reason. No, no voter ID. You have ID on every credit card. You have it on everything. But think, and you know, the interesting, the people of the Democrat Party, it's 87 percent think that you should have voter ID. It's only the leaders, because their policies are so bad that they couldn't get elected. I mean, who want, who's going to get elected with open borders, 
a woke military, high interest rates, high taxes, a country that's not respected anywhere in the world. We've totally lost our place in the world. Pretty soon, we're going to lose our dollar as currency. It's the worst thing. That'll be worse than losing any war. They are so bad. And now I'm hearing the northern border is a problem. How about that one? The northern border. They're, but they're, it's actually becoming less because the southern border is so bad, they can say, you know, with me, they were trying because they couldn't get in there. We had the safest border in history. The safest border in history three years ago. All this guy had to do is go to the beach. Now, he's going to the beach all the time now. He's got a consultant. I don't know, Harmeet, if you know his consultant. He's got a consultant who thinks he looks good in a bathing suit, I guess. <laughs> and he's at the beach every day. If he would have done that, instead of destroying all of the things we did, we had the greatest — stay in Mexico, a little thing called — remain in Mexico. We had the greatest catch and release. We used to catch and release — release them in our country. Our catch and release was you catch them, release them in Mexico. And Mexico was fine with it, because if they weren't, we were going to put tariffs on their cars like you wouldn't believe. And they said, we'd love to have you do whatever you want to do, sir. <laughs> Together, we will reverse the decline of America, and we will end the desecration of your once great state, California. This is not a great state anymore. This is a dumping ground. You're a dumping ground. The world is being dumped into California. Prisoners, terrorists, mental patients. You have mental institutions. They say, sir, please don't use the words insane asylum, because that's, you know, that's silence of the lamb stuff. That's big stuff. <laughs> mental institutions, sir, is nicer. I said, no, I think I'll mention both. We, mental institutions and then times 10, insane asylum. They're all being dropped. They're all being dropped into our country. We're a dumping ground. When I was president, I got along with Gavin Newsom, but I didn't like what he was doing. Very simple. I liked him. You know, he always goes around telling me we had a very good relationship. We had a good relationship, but I didn't like what he was doing. The people of California don't have water. They pay a fortune for the water. You know, I own something in Palos Verdes. Anybody play my big, beautiful club on the ocean? I actually think it's the best golf course in California, but beautiful, with the clubhouse, everything, right on the ocean. And this is really on the ocean. I always say, I have the ocean. Pebble Beach has the bay. It's a big difference. It's true. They talk about Pebble Beach, Pebble Beach. No, no. I have the ocean. They have the bay. You know, I, the ocean tends to be better. Historically, oceans are better than bays. Do we agree? Right? But I have to pay a fortune for water, to water the grass. I have to pay a fortune. If I told you the number, I don't even want to tell you the number. It's embarrassing. And you have so much water, and we're going to talk about that. But during that period of time, I got to know California quite a well. You know, I've owned that for a long time, and it's become a tremendous success. But the taxes that you have to pay and all of the things you have to pay, uh, it's a very, very hard way to make a buck in, in uh, the state. Very hard to do it. At one point, I was riding up a highway with a number of great congressmen like Devin Nunes at the time, you know, Devin. He's heading up Truth 